wellness and oneness everybody all the party people in the planet earth and in this cosmos and this part of the universe um what's the chit chat at earthly matter we want to build with some omega suns data but first let me introduce you to some things <laughs> Welcome to Omega Sun's Life. Welcome to the Sun Spot of Omega Sun's Life. This is Omega Sun himself, part of the Wealth Chambers experience. Hope you and all um, are prosperous and blessed in your way, in your walk, in your talk, you know, and, and get things together. I want to talk to you a little bit about the code. Some you call it G code, some you call it a code of conduct. But it's basically a pattern of behavior that creates some standards and qualities for a person's characteristics as they walk around the community or the neighborhood they're in. There are certain codes that are written, like you know the U.S. code, like um, there's codes of ethics for your job. There's a um, area code, zip codes, and they basically. Put things in perspective from where you, your point of view, where you are, making sure we're able to locate you in what your situation is. That's what that part of the code is. But there's also that unwritten code, a list of behaviors and qualities that affect human behavior so we know what type of person we can deal with, that we must deal with. And, you know, you may see on my screen uh, right now something that Neely Fuller, Dr. Neely Fuller, uh, put together in his um, compensatory code of dealing with racism. Um, it was more of an elaborate title. If you want to get into Dr. Neely Fuller, just Google that man and, and look into how he conceptualized the terms and the behaviors of people in society that use the code against people that were being oppressed. And he's very deliberate and specific on how he worded his words. So one, there'd be clarity. Two, there'd be um, the definitions would be right and exact on point. And three, so you know how to navigate when you hear these word salads and these different um, perspectives of people trying to go through the loopholes on what the code is. Now you see it's the nine areas of human activity in the system of global racism and I would say pale paranoia. That's how I call it. Um, AKA white supremacy. Why? Because as Dr. French Crescent uh, plainly put it in her dissertations and her lectures, that the ultimate threat for white supremacy or the white power structure was to protect itself from genetic annihilation. And you say, well, why is that a thing? These, you know, people are people, right? This is true. Humans are humans. There's only really one race. But here's the thing. When it comes to genetic annihilation, we're talking about genes, which ones are dominant, which ones are recessive, which ones are mutable, which ones are fixed, and how they come into play into the advancement of humanity. And understand that one of the codes was to put a lot of supremacy dialect and scientific dishonesty into the curriculum. It was actually woven into what they call academia, where these things were expressed to say, well, white genes 
or the white people themselves were inferior because they were, they were a refined stage of evolution while the darker beings on the planet were more primitive and not as civilized. And remember, this is interwoven into academia, so as you go on learning, you start to find these pit stops and orange cones of contention. Basically, dating back to archaic times of, let's say, the late 1400s, early 1500s, more into the 1500s going into the 1600s, because this is when colorism starts to take place. A changing of the guard took place. The wars were more lopsided. It was darker cultures versus lighter cultures, right? So genetic annihilation deals with the pale gene, the white gene, and what we call the black gene, or the darker genes. And because two black people can make black and white in the form of albinism, and we're going to get into that um, maybe another time. I'm going to get into that now. But because two black people can make a light child, two white people can make a dark child. And that has been the point of contention, right? Okay, this is not what we call racism. Racism itself is one's belief in their race being superior over another. But it's more than that. It is also a system where the people that feel that they have that advantage can suppress others, oppress others, as well as control, control the resources for themselves and pick and choose who gets to use the rest of the resources. It is a systematic thing, okay? It's a systematic nuance that has bigotry in it, that has prejudice in it. It also has um, the term plausible deniability and benign neglect. Benign neglect is interesting because it tells the, partic the, the participant of benign neglect, this is not on you. This has nothing to do with you. This is not your fault. This is just the way things are. And because it's the way things are and you don't have any accountability, you shouldn't feel bad. This is not your fight. And it goes against the common sense of humanity, which is the progression of humanity in its totality. But you would like to see people treated the way you would like to be treated. The golden rule. And that's code one. It's so universal amongst different cultures, amongst different societies. It is the mainstay of what gives balance to this planet. One, treat others as you would treat yourself. But within that, we see a little contention because some people don't even want to treat themselves properly, right? That's interesting. See, when you're able to empathize with someone, when you're able to empathize with somebody's cause and where they come from, chances are you would do little to nothing wrong to them because you would like to see them grow as you like to see yourself grow. But like I said, keeping the code to self-preservation becomes different because now it's not about the next man. It's about you and those who relate to you. And how can I keep my agenda or that person's agenda running way into the future? And the future is created now. Don't believe the hype. Like we gotta look 20 years ahead 40 years in, the, the future starts now, from these words forward. The past just happened from a few words back. So you're judged on your works now. 
What are you doing now to contribute to the cause of the future? We could talk about what you've done in the past. That, yeah. But once you're ready to redeem the necessary accountability and you're ready to redeem yourself from any mishaps that may have happened before, you can work towards a better future. We talk about the areas of public activity and how they affect not just humanity, but the world and its environment in whole. Because you see, it's also these behaviors that go out into the world of existence and affect other creatures, other uh, uh, places, environments, homeostasis of the planet itself, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, the nine areas. The code of education, like I just stated before, was in academia, it was all about who was dominant in the intellectual phases of understanding what nature was and society was to be and uh, um, putting out the arts and putting out science in itself. But just like anything in, in life, especially in uh, ed education, we go from economics to education, right? Economics gives you the ability to work thoroughly through education. Because you need resources. You need to be able to get to these primary sources. You need people to be free enough to, and comfortable as well, to look into these ideas and look into what's around them. And take notes. Not only to take notes, but also to teach those notes. So economics flows into education. So when you have a people that are oppressed or a person that is oppressed and don't have the resources to keep up with the economics available, you know, that's available, or the economics is not good, and they don't have the ability to keep up with the a bright new education that's available because notes are traded forth with people that are trading and have access to resources, you come at a disadvantage, so it makes it harder for you to enter fields of study that can help you gain greater economics. Like, what are you saying, right? In other words, if you're too hungry to go to school, chances are you're gonna focus on the hunger first before you focus on the lessons. You see? That's why having a free lunch program was very important to, for the inner city. It was adopted, it was first constructed by the Black Panther Party of the 70s, and then it was basically adopted and, and, and put forth into every uh, community across America um, in the form of social programs in the, in the, in the school system. Because you know, when you have a fed child, they're more alert, or they should be more alert to the lesson that you're giving them. But the question is, what lessons are you giving them? Are these lessons part of the code? I'm always going back to the code. Remember, the code is a structure of written and unwritten rules that control human behavior. It's a program. Like you have codes for your computer. You have a computer program, but you also have a code, which is the, the backing of the system. It's actually the legs that help you move around in the system. You get that? Entertainment. Because of the, the money trickle down and you may not have enough resources, you're looking for a way to increase your education, you may get an education in school and it, it be just enough. You get out of college and you're looking for more things to do. You may just go to college because you're able to do something uh, um, athletic or you're part of the arts. 
it depends on what you're presenting. If you do not have the resources to sit back and travel the world and get that type of education, you're at a disadvantage to look and study that which is given. And those curriculums may not be complete enough for the mind that you may have. So you'll focus on the entertainment world. Why? Because in the entertainment world, there are, chance, there are ways to make something out of nothing. You sing, you rap, you dance, play an instrument, get it out there. You throw the ball, you run the ball, you hike the ball, you block other people, you box, you wrestle, you rap, you DJ, you dance again. You draw. It is entertainment. Entertainment. Into the holding of the mental. What's going to keep a person's attention? Why keep a person's attention is, is the next question. But what keeps a person's attention at bay and hold? Tame. Like contain. Retainment. Entertainment. What are we holding for that time? And is it valuable enough to pay this attention? Like we're looking to YouTube and Zoom and Twitch. Even some portions of our job, it doesn't really move the needle. Sometimes it becomes entertainment. Just to hold your attention while the real big things are happening in front of you and behind you. This is why words are important as well. Remember, the economics, you get an increased base of resources to get into other forms of education would give you specialized language and ideas and, and technologies and and more specialized skills so you can understand new languages in those fields of interest. With those new languages in those fields of interest, your mind is holding and it enters that new field with that language. So, so for some people, entertainment is accounting. Where they're so great with numbers and how systems work and how uh, uh, how a spreadsheet can flow and how you can control uh, a business from, from point A to point Z, getting all those, uh, 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 crunching all those numbers together, learning what um, projections are, the value of certain systems, just off the rip, just, just off a snap, it becomes entertainment because you dealt from the and had the time to study. You weren't worried about the social conditions outside of your outside of your door. You zoned in and got this information into the information to hold for your mental entertainment. If you're into law, you get fascinated by casework. How did this happen? What was the decision in this? Why did this break? What does this case have to do with this case? Then you go into the history of the cases. Then you know, learn the structure of law. What is to be said? Robert's rules. All these different things come into effect. Now it becomes part of your, your thinking, your, your mind structure, how you organize thoughts. How you say your words, how clear those words will be. This is what gives importance to books like the Black Law Dictionary. This is what gives that structure, that gives that value to law reviews, judicial reviews. It's a part of entertainment. Because all the world's a stage. After the entertainment comes the labor, the work. You know, the stuff that, the stuff that is like the, 
the brick and mortar of the entertainment world. Because it is a business. Somebody has to handle the money. Somebody has to make sure that the contracts are available, read, understood, and signed. Somebody has to make sure that entertainment is housed properly. All this stuff takes work. Paperwork, which is part of the bureaucratic system, it takes um, knowing the codes of ordinances and, and uh, um, labor laws and uh, um, building codes. And all the little nuances to make things work. And everybody can be involved. But when we talk about hell paranoia or white supremacy and racism itself, because it's not just one type of people doing this. We're talking about people that control these resources and don't divvy it out amongst the communities and neighborhoods properly. So many people are disenfranchised from the labor unless it's free or at a very low cost where they can keep a high overhead. See how that goes back to economics. And there's a coding system to say who's allowed to labor for this much and compare it that much. This is where specialized languages and studies come into play. For the person with a master's degree, chances are they'll make 30,000 to 50,000 more than a person with a bachelor's degree. And even farther gap between a bachelor's degree and somebody that just graduated out of high school. Why? Because of the level of understanding and academic study the focus on the field of interest to develop these ideas become more valuable and important when they're building a structure. But if a person doesn't have the skill but may have the paperwork, do they always go back to square one? Not often. There's people that had the opportunity and the privilege to get those degrees to advance. Every opportunity. But didn't have what it takes to stay there or didn't have uh, 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 the drive to be innovators. So then you'll get a person that labored hard at what the field of study was, knew and understand this is a form of the education that they got and were able to shoot off, being college dropouts, being just high school uh, uh, graduates, uh, being people that probably even didn't go to school and excel to the point of the highest wave of economics and hire doctors, master's degrees, stuff like that. Because they don't understand the importance of labor itself is an education. Labor is an education. But you have to like start from the crown. You have to see the the the, the, the underpinnings of what keeps it in place. You say, what does this have to do with the G code? The code, always going back to the code. Because if you're living in a life of desperation, you have to work with what's around you. Those become your resources. So when you get agencies or people smuggling drugs in your community and you don't have a way to get a job in that community, and you see 30, 50, 100 people like you, you try to separate yourself so you can at least feed 20 of them. First feed yourself and your family, but the empathy kicks in. You know you can't do this alone. Labor has to be done. So some labor in the tools of self-destruction. And that's where we are right now. People have been laboring in the tools of self-destruction until they form a level of laziness and complacency. Because it's hard work to build a skyscraper. It's 
hard work, it's hard labor to get companies and networks built where you can share a building that becomes a landmark in the scenery. See, that's the, the point. When we talk about the monoliths that were out long before us, it wasn't just to say that um, oh, we can build this, this is the, the temple for our creator and you know all this stuff. It was a, 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 a it was a performance of mathematics and organized thought, organized labor. One common goal that we would come across and do this. And it was a mighty work. And not everyone's enslaved to do that. People were paid. You gotta really look into the books. And I don't, listen, you may have your, your religious stance and you may have uh, 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 um, the things that you were told. But I suggest you go a little further, get into some primary documentation. And if you really want to know and understand, you look at the language. Remember, going back to that education, you do not, you do not research and go deep, a little bit deep, and be obje objective about it. Be objective about it and sincere. You may crack the code. They open the code up. So yeah, the labor of the labor of self-destruction has poisoned the community because one has to feel that they're rougher than the next one in order to achieve their goal and feed their circle. Sometimes just to get out of the labor of self-destruction. But it all goes back to economics and either the lack or benefit of education. The nine, the nine activities, the nine activities went into five. Six, uh, 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 into uh, uh, four. Five is a law. And they know that work is going to be done. There has to be laws to make sure that this work is either done correctly or done the way that the uh, or done the way that it needs to be done. Law. Law is the wall. It's the regulator. Like you have a limiter or a regulator. Because it starts from point A, your point. And it's a line. That's what a ray is. A point, then a line that can go to infinity. But you just can't shoot around and do what you want to do. Not without the golden rule that says, treat others as you would treat yourself. So the law is there to provide you a way to construct and, and, and keep your conduct in respect to other people's journeys as well. So you can't just dig your hand in somebody's pockets because you're broke. It's, it's against the law. A thief in some places with their law would get their hand cut off. Rapists would get stoned, killed on sight. Pedophiles, ostracized, killed on sight. Adulterers, adulterers, stoned. It's the Hammurabi code, eye for an eye. Damage the eye of a man that didn't need to be touched. Your eye must be plucked out. Tooth for a tooth, life for a life. Take from me, I have the right to take from you. See, but it couldn't be that barbaric and so the laws and the codes were established. So people had to respect something so they won't transgress them against one another. There were codes that we had, like, it gets too dark, mama said go upstairs, daddy said go upstairs, the lights come on, I wanna see you in the house. 
you call. Check in if you're out. Too long and too far. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your voice. You do your chores before you play. You do your homework before you do your chores before you play. See that works? Respect your elders. Respect your elders. Let me say it one more time. Respect your elders. And the elders, respect the minds of the youth. Because they may go through some, they may have something to say through their expression that may have been overlooked. But the wise counsel of elders would control the flow of the community. Usually they had a big mama system. I mean, this is like for thousands of years. So don't think that it's a, a one group doing this at one particular time. This was many societies that did this. Of course, uh, 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 countless times. Why? Because the older mother basically knew her children. It's just a simple thing. The men and the fathers were more into labor. Something needs to get fixed, call. Boom, we hit. Manly work, that, that's what they considered manly work. The fixing and the putting together, and the securing and the defending, making sure the perimeter is, is taken care of. That's what was considered that type of work. It required strong back, strong, strong muscles, a strong mental to suffer the, 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 um, the environment. But being, being a woman, a motherly woman is not dainty either. They have to control the flow of the timing of the day. When people eat, what is there to eat? How can they construct what is there to eat? What, what role are the children gonna play? the temperament of this man. He only rises when he sees the power of the woman. He only rises when he sees the power of the woman and flow and he adorns her. Then his status is raised. That's the law. Because as I treat myself, I treat. So she's good, I'm good. When the children are good, we're all good. When the family is good, the neighbors are good. The neighborhood is good. The community becomes something because now it's going back to economics. We share the resources and how things are developed, how things are distributed. Law. Cold. You just can't shoot in the middle of the street. Save the women and babies. You just can't go around putting hits out with no no consequence, no protocol. Don't work like that. You can't set up shop here because you don't have the genuine interest of the people in this area. You feel me? That's cold. A lot of that's being broken. Even in hip hop right you couldn't come into a cypher spitting a whack 16 you couldn't come in spitting a whack 8 after the, the 4 6 bar they, they getting you out of there like yo you don't even sound like a rapper you need to go but if you're having fun we'll allow it see how that works why because your intentions were clear you didn't come here looking for a deal you didn't come here trying to show out that, we knew that was for the heavy hitters. When they get when they get on the mic, they're gonna say what they need to say and get it right. That was the law of hip hop. But if you came in, you had fun, you just like yeah, I'm gonna really participate. And you had something to say, and you you can say that. You can say it. Shine on. It was a code, code of respect, peace, love, unity, having fun. 
But the law is to ground people enough where they don't transgress on each other's journey and impede on their their progress as as beings. We're all trying to get it get it right in the society, the best way we know how. And because the rule of law, well, the labor of self-destruction has basically unbalance the rule of law we also see the code of systematic destruction of other people and oppression build on from institutions that don't have the best interests in heart and that leads to bad politics that leads to bad politics that leads to heavy oppression and resistance See, now we get into the next flow of politics because a set of rules need to be governed and also uh, it has to go through this justice process do a process of due justice because you just can't grab somebody off the street and say they did something when they're innocent you just can't condemn a people to say this is who they are and they've been tampered with you just can't rip a history from a people then say that it's their fault for being in a certain predicament no a lot of people had no a lot of people had something to do with that a lot of people had something to do with that and they live to the benefit of it now now that's why there's a resistance against it you have not treated me like you treat yourself or have you or have you. And this is where politics comes to be. Politics is for the general, the general interest of the people, not the politician. The general interest of the people, not the institution. The general interest of the people, not uh, some people. If it's not seen equally throughout the law, the rule of law, the golden rule, it is corrupt politics. It is, it messes with the economy. Because now you impede people of their progress, they can't form new ideas, so they have to live on a life of desperation. So they choose to break the law and labor in the, the um, practice of self-destruction which includes everybody getting it. If there's something to get sold, I'm gonna be a part of it because I need to feed my family and my circle. And my circle needs to be fed. We have to develop some type of economics so we can have a better relationship with education. So we're able to build new ideas. And then when you start to see it happen, you need deep already. So the game has already been rigged. And then you got one more aggressive than others that want to take that spot. You see how that works? Then law is all the way out. It's now barbarism. How I'm going to get what I need to get and stay on top of the game. How I'm going to get what I need to get and, and keep control of what I need to keep control of because I may be doing it for a good cause but I know this is a bad thing. I know it's a, it's a, it's a destructive thing going on and then you don't get the redemption you don't get the redemption the same people that say oh, look at that man he's, he's rocking he's looking good and all that stuff the same ones that say look how you got it though look how you got it though disgusting and it is and it is but it should be a, 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 a some type of redemption going sometime and that's why after the scene the politics of how these things come into play and who gets bought out what system manages to creep out of the politics so they look a little better than others the religion comes in and in the religion it has its own development from economics education entertainment labor, law, 
has its own politics. It's all it's, it has with the economy. You get people that don't even necessarily may believe in the religion itself, but still are charismatic enough to deliver the message for the religion. Can you hear me? Or, or have practice practices that are counterproductive to the religion and still practice the religion. Because religion only means relying on a source, the creator, your grouping, the head of your grouping. You rely on that. So you do in the practices and the lessons that are within it. But if you impede the spiritual progress and impede the journey of another person because you think yours is right and is the only one to consult, we have problems. We have problems and there'll be dissension. And there'll also be a lot of hypocrisy in that, that doctrine. Lots of it. Definitely lots of division, but definitely, definitely lots of hypocrisy. Because you forgot about the golden rule. Respect one another, which is I want for myself what I want for you. And with that being said, you will not be shooting in the middle of the street, killing babies, giving old folks heart attacks, punching people, destroying things that are not yours. Yeah. Thievery, murder, you were not, you're not dealing it. Covetness, covet, covet, covetness. <laughs> you were not dealing it because you know the law. A religion, it's one thing that suppresses. One thing that is suppressed in religion that can give you power. If you use it properly, energy, sex. We get into number eight of the human activities that Dr. Neely Fuller described and articulated well in his book. Sex is more than just the activity. It is the interaction from the meeting point, from the idea of what you think sex is first, all the way up to actually mating with the person in developing a relationship with them, uh, developing a bond. I try not to use relationship too much because it seems like a ship on the rocks and as long as we relate, we can get along and it's not like that. It's a bond that you have with this next person. It's a bond that you have in this natural sense. It could be manipulated by those who choose to see their own opinions of what they think this interaction is. But when you scale it down to the light being forms that we are, <laughs> it is an exchange of those energies. Biochemical and fluid, biochemical and electric, all together. And it can influence what religion you get into. Or the religion can influence what type of sex you're dealing with, even though there's a lot of hypocrisy there, and we know what we're talking about when we say it. Hmm. Your religion, though it suppresses what they consider lust, also while doing that becomes a repressed kind of passive aggressive nature inside of certain people because they're not able to fully express themselves they bottleneck it and put it into something else and then it becomes destructive or manipulated to something that it wasn't supposed to be on its next outward journey into expression the manipulation of sex becomes the manipulation of economics becomes the manipulation of politics, the manipulation of entertainment, 
the corruption of these activities. You're using your education as a leverage point so you gain more popularity through your dialect of speech. You're forming laws to continue the repression but lessen the consequences for those that are deviant. And it messes up the human activity, the flow of it. So people don't respect the sex anymore. They figure it's a bargaining tool just to get their way, just to get a, satis a satisfaction. And it does sex a disservice. Sacred energy exchange. <laughs> Sacred energy exchange. I love it. So you have to have a holistic first the first thing you have to do is love yourself remember treat others how I treat myself love yourself so much you're not going to have this exchange with just anybody and you're going to respect the one that you do have the exchange with so you're forming a union you're forming a bond that that controls and vibrates at such a high level a high frequency that it, it just it, it forms into a new way of life where there is no war <laughs> war is the ninth one and it's only born out of contention anger frustration lust fear cowardice but it's hard to be peaceful I tell you it's hard to be peaceful that's why I don't expect unity. I, ex I, I demand solidarity, but I don't expect unity. Solidarity means you stuck to the code and you do respect others as you respect yourself. And you do treat others as you would treat yourself because it's an action. But you cannot have peace without love. And there's usually a lot of war to get to love. The war is a contention, and the first war is within yourself. That's why we say know thyself. So you can stop the war. But the war is selfish. It's about the egos going at it. To try to jockey for what? Economics. Which is not always a monetary thing. Many times, economics is just the sharing of resources. Now, high bread, and you want some? And I'm that type of person, I'll break it off for you. If I see you doing dirty, you don't get it. Then you get mad you don't get it, you want to try to take it. So I have to defend. Or you're upset that you didn't get it. You'll form something, like an education, an entertainment. You'll bring something to use to the table that gives you a purpose, then you'll get double what you just put in. Maybe even triple. But the first contention is within yourself. If you feel you can't develop it and do it yourself, that's the first war. Then we're gonna see if you're gonna labor in self-destructive activities going down the line from what resources you have, what education you have, what captures your mind. That's why you have to be careful with what you listen to and what holds your attention. Those are the nine activities. I hopefully gave a clarification on what the code is, because when they talk about snitching and telling, snitching is when we do the wrong together. One of us get caught, and to get out of the consequences of getting caught, you tell. But that goes against, not just the law, but respect. I thought I was your man. Thought we was in this together. You trade on me, now we can't deal with you. Different from being a, uh, an observer, seeing something wrong, going to the law, and saying this isn't right. As a community, we can't have this happen. You let it be known, people come aware of it, 
shut it down. You can't blame that person for telling you. They're not a part of what you're doing here. Keep what you're doing there. That's labor of self-destruction because it's self-destruction at the end of the day. Under wraps. Those destructive activities get redeemed. Which is not in the religion. It is in the religion, but we see the hypocrisy of it. But the redemption comes with the work. Develop a higher form of economics for the people to understand and deal with the education, what it is to be them. So they have a free expression. They're no longer dependent on other people's systems. See how that works? Then you could develop a stronger law and new politics that favors the genuine interests of you and yours. All this so you're no longer at war. And sex is good because it's with peace and love. The sex is good because it's with peace and war and it leads to new life. Not self-destructive behavior. That's part two. I wish you and yours wellness, oneness, solidarity with clarity. Understand what the nine activities are. This is my personal analysis of it. I'm sure you can come up with your own. But understand the first code, the genuine the genuine rule, the law of the universe. Treat others as you would treat yourself. And I hope you treat yourself with love. 